Hey YouTube, happy St. Patrick's Day, or uh, day after St. Patrick's Day, I guess, by the time this is uploaded. Um, I hope you're all staying clean and staying healthy and staying safe. Obviously, that's very important at this particular moment. Uh, in any case, I got a request the other day from uh, Ophir Shalom, uh, aka Vipex SMM on Discord and on Twitter, to do a creator's analysis, similar to what I did here for the later the better, um, for this level here, Newton's Law, which is probably my second hardest level, currently uploaded in Mario Maker 2. There's not as much to say about this level as there was for this level, so hopefully this won't be another, like, 35 minute video, because <laughs> uh, that was a bit excessive last time, but, uh, yeah, we'll see how it all goes. I will try to explain everything uh, as best I can in detail. Uh, I'll go over the whole thing in editor in case anybody wants to rebuild the level. Uh, this is just basically a tool for anybody who is looking to grind this level out but doesn't know where to start or doesn't feel that there are enough resources at their disposal to do so. So right off the bat here, just got these three shell jumps, pretty simple. Uh, grab them off the ledge up here. This is the first slightly tricky bit. So for this little segment here, one of the things that commonly goes wrong I see when people are first playing this level is this shell collides with this one here. And that happens, let's see if I can try and get it here, demonstrate. Oh wow, I'm actually getting pretty lucky here. Oh my goodness. This is a bad demonstration. There we go. So you'll see right here, I'm above the shell, I'm facing this way, and I'm inside the shell facing the other way. So what this trail isn't showing is right here in between, there was a frame where I was turning around. And when you're in that frame, holding this shell on top of this enemy stack here, uh, it's going to collide. But you need to turn around in order to get this shell up this gap. So there are two ways to avoid this. The first is to commit to holding forward and then after bonking the wall you switch and throw it up like that. The second is to do like a really tiny little L tap like that. Um, either of these ways works just fine, it's just a matter of preference. I personally hold forward into the wall, I find it easier to control your momentum that way than doing the L tap. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of preference. So then, uh, nothing to say until here. So you'll notice right there that the shells collided. I didn't have enough time to do a shell jump and grab the shell and do another one. And the reason that is is because there's a curved ceiling here. So depending on when you up throw this shell, it's going to bonk and it's going to fall down at a different time. So ideally you want it to be up in this tile right here because um, then it's not going to bonk. It's not going to collide with you. But if you throw it and it bonks on this one, or even if it clips the side of this one and sort of gets ejected out, uh, then you're going to have some troubles. You can save it with a controlled shell jump, but then it's difficult to get the height requirement here. So the way I do this, and different people have done this differently, but I, I grab the shell, I sort of flick left, and then go neutral and up throw. And what that does is it just kills your momentum just enough so that you can land on it, but enough so the shell doesn't drift after you've thrown it. Uh, and that ensures it gets up in this region here. And then you can shell jump off either wall, it doesn't matter, as long as you get enough height to get up here and onto this mole. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind here the curved ceiling makes this a little bit tricky. Nothing to say about this part, it's just a shell jump. Uh, this bit, I think I actually have to change this if I recall to make the beetle go the right way in this setup. Um, yeah. Again, not much to say. Uh, keep in mind, similar to what I said back down here, um, you got to look out for these collisions um, when you're turning around on top of these beetles quickly back and forth. Um, but really, it's just pretty straightforward. Um, you can do full jumps here if you want to take your time. It doesn't really matter, uh, whichever you think works. Um, so the next spot is here. I should probably talk about this segment. It's a little bit deceptive in its difficulty because of some sort of hidden precision elements to it. So 
that's the that's the thing that happens most often right there is the shell you're holding collides with the beetle shell so the way i avoid that and i, I think itsy and yoshi did this in different ways as well uh who are the two clears with like a clear video up on youtube i, I don't quite remember what uh hoku did um but <clears throat> basically you want this top shell first of all if you throw it into the wall it's going to collide already so don't do that you have to be facing away from the wall um, you want to be drifting out as far from the wall as possible and then when you reach right about here just commit in so drift out from the wall on this shell jump do the shell jump and then joystick or d-pad neutral so you go up and commit to holding forward and then flick the opposite direction so that uh, you're facing away from this wall when you land on this shell because otherwise again you're gonna have the turnaround collision issue if you don't and you need to throw this shell up this gap so um, let's try and demonstrate whoopsies um, the other thing that makes this a little bit difficult is that spike that I just narrowly avoided there um, if you drift out too far it is possible to hit this spike but if you cut it too close it's possible to hit this spike so you need to get it just right try and just cut out enough to avoid this spike and then hold hard into this wall to make sure you're not bonking on this one and then it's just shell jumps once you get up here this one's really easy you literally just throw it early and then up through these spikes sometimes it can be difficult to avoid this one right here um, it's just a matter of knowing when to commit so I, I sort of throw it and then flick left until I'm right about when I'm around uh, about to hit the shell so that's gonna kill my momentum so that I'm not too far ahead to go into this spike and then if I commit right before I hit it it's gonna make sure that I'm going up through here and not gonna hit this um, but yeah this one's pretty easy you can up throw to get a shell it doesn't really help you because I do not believe this jump is makeable uh, so, not much point in having any hidden blocks or anything here. That's just a shell jump. This one is tricky. The thing that's hard about this one is just the height you need to get, right? Because if you just do a shell jump here, oopsies, like any old shell jump, you don't really get the full height. See, I'm on par with this mole. I need to get a full extra block here. The other issue is if you drift out too far, see, that was actually good. You're gonna kill the mole. I'm gonna try and demonstrate that here, like that, and then you can't get it either. So, so the height you get in a shell jump, if you think about it, is sort of a function of two things, two variables: your distance from the wall that you're shell jumping off of, and the height that you've lost between the time you throw the shell and the time you land on it. So here, your distance from the wall needs to be very specific, because if you're if you're here then no matter where you throw the shell, if you've got shell jump time, you're going to kill this mole. So you, you can't be this close. If you're this far, then yeah, there's no way you're getting the height. So you got to be right in this block here. That's going to have the shell hit this muncher here. Then, if you just do that, you're still only going to get up to about where this mole is, right? Usually. So what you need to do now is minimize the distance you travel downwards after throwing the shell before landing on it but also maintain enough momentum to get up the distance onto here diagonally so the way i do this is i sort of swing out into this little region here between these two blocks right where this trail is i throw it i swing back out and around trying to cut it as close to this spike as possible and then i go up uh, onto the mole like this if i can demonstrate here like that um the other thing you'll notice i'm going to stop before my trail disappears is i turned left before hitting this mole if you commit to holding forward sometimes a few different things can happen first of all you can die to the nose of the mole even if you had the height just because you've committed too soon and uh flicking left preserves enough momentum to get you to this wall but also sort of corrects it so that you're a little bit farther away from the mole so you're not going to die to it if you have the height the other thing that can happen is you can get a 
so so this mole has a rounded hitbox basically and if you hold forward sometimes you can get um, a bounce off the sort of edge of its hitbox which is going to do two things one you're going to be bouncing a lot sooner than you expected uh, which sometimes can be hard to react to and get the shell jump and also you're going to have less height which can make it difficult to get up here uh, without doing like a perfect shell jump so flicking left here is just sort of a safety precaution um, then oopsies these are just shell jumps there's not much to say about them um, you can in, in theory you can even do them off this wall if you want to like tiny controlled shell jumps like uh, like that kind of idea just if you were going for world record but it's safest to just go like this um, I sort of you'll notice I sort of tap forward after I've landed on them like I don't just go like this and then not touch anything you can do that it's riskier because uh, you can hit this spike or this spike more easily and also you're again at risk of landing on the rounded edge of the Beatles hitbox which can give you a bounce you're not really expecting so I sort of I, I go straight up controller neutral and then tap forward like that and then drift left and then is the drop uh, which I mean there's a practice door for the drop but the issue is that the practice which is over on this side doesn't let you practice the pipe entry it just lets you go to what would it be the equivalent of getting like here in the level uh, and the pipe entry is difficult I'll be honest and it's caused a lot of deaths and I regret not allowing players to practice it uh, better than I did but essentially you just need to sort of memorize the fall pattern um, it helps if you can just visualize the level in your head like I haven't played this level in months obviously I've been I've been looking at it since starting this recording but like if I just close my eyes right now I think you go down to the side and then you swing back out and then you drop straight down a bit and then back out again and then you do zigzag one two three and then four way out and then five way back in and then you hit the shell and into the pipe um, so if you can just think about that, it's going to help you, uh, stay on your toes, so to speak, when you're falling. Um, it's, it's very difficult to react just on the fly to an environment this harsh, this unforgiving while falling. And just in general, falling in Mario games is sort of hard to, uh, get a, get a good feel for. Like, you see levels like with a similar concept a lot in, in Super Mario World ROM hacks, uh, which is even easier then because you can control your fall speed much more effectively, but it's still just very difficult to design well. Um, so if you can visualize it in your head, that helps, um, but also just muscle memory is going to help you here. There are a few little visual cues I use for when to start my movements. Um, so for here, you just kind of got to get your way through this. I drift out a bit. I do sometimes a few little turnbacks to dodge some spikes. But basically, you bonk against this wall, and then right around here, you're going to commit. So you're cutting it just under this spike. If you do that too excessively well, and I regret this, you can actually hit this spike. If you're going to do that, just do a little turn back to avoid it. Um, you should be able to tell when you're in line for hitting the spike. Then here, don't hold forward against this one way. I know some people thought that this one way was so once you're in here, you could just hold forward and then go here, but you're gonna brush up against this spike. This one way is actually on the way up. You can hold forward to get on this mole instead of um, dying to this spike. So wait until you're like right around here, drift out. If you're too late, you're gonna hit this muncher. Uh, if you're too early, you're going to hit this spike. Anywhere uh, but in that sort of space between, you're going to be safe. Just zigzag. Uh, here, remember munchers have obnoxious hitboxes in this game, so don't turn around too uh, early, or else you're going to sort of clip its underbelly, which is annoying. But it happens. Um, you're, you've got plenty of time to make these switchbacks. They're not super tight. Like, if I wanted to be aggressive, I could have done something like that and that would have been very difficult um, but yeah so just one two three switch out here then here you're gonna sort of fall along this wall right until this block this block is supposed to be basically the visual cue um, and right around this block you're gonna switch 
So I, you actually need to start switching like a block sooner, but because it's a Q, I gave you time to react. So right when you hit this is when you should start holding it so that you actually start moving down here. Um, so don't try and predict it. Make sure you're actually reacting and not predicting. Otherwise you're gonna be too high. Uh, so you fall down through here, then right around here, this pillar-ish, you're gonna do sort of a, a flick. Just similar to what you've been doing elsewhere in the level. It's gonna change your direction but preserve your momentum for the most part. It's gonna slow you down very slightly and that's just gonna prevent you from hitting this spike. Um, and it's also going to set you up better to get into this pipe entry because it's going to be easier to cancel the momentum you have. So you're gonna flick to the opposite direction Bonk this shell, the shell's gonna bounce off this wall, this wall, it's gonna go under, you're gonna land on it, you're gonna get up in this pipe. And assuming you've done everything else in the level correctly, you will win. So just make sure to look out for the visual cues. Um, practice in the blue pipe uh, until you feel comfortable. And if you're really worried about the pipe entry here, I will show you the whole level uh, in the editor so that if you want to recreate it, you are free to do so without having to meticulously go through the clear video. So that's pretty much all there is to say about this one. Um, thanks everybody for watching. If you have any extra questions that you felt I didn't explain aptly enough in this video, feel free to put them in the comments. I will be sure to answer them. Um, if you have a level of mine that you would like to have analyzed, Again, I'm, I'll take requests. I'm probably going to end up doing one of these for uh, Deep Jank 9 in any case, and possibly uh, Saharan Chinook as well. Um, in the meantime, thanks everybody again for watching. Uh, stay clean, stay healthy, stay safe. I'll see you guys later.